Welcome to Medical Mallu. Today we are going to discuss about the topic anti-adrenergic drugs that is alpha blockers and beta blockers. Regarding the alpha blockers, let's go into its classification. First of all, the alpha blockers, it is divided into two. It is of non-equilibrium type and equilibrium type. Non-equilibrium type is phenoxybenzamine. Equilibrium type is again subdivided into three non-selective alpha 1 selective and alpha 2 selective in non-selective examples are phentolamine and chlorpromazine alpha 1 selective example is the prasosin which is an important drug then terasosin alpha 2 selective it is yohimbin next let's go into the use and functions of this alpha blockers first of all the alpha blockers causes block of the alpha receptors in the blood vessels it causes inhibition of this vasoconstriction and resulting in reduced blood pressure so what happens in the heart we have seen that there is reduced blood pressure that is reduced mean arterial pressure it causes reflex tachycardia in the heart next the effect of alpha blockers in the gut or intestine it inhibits the smooth muscles in the intestine resulting in inhibition of the intestinal relaxation it is acting more especially in the alpha 1 receptors and it causes increased mortality next is its effect in the hemodynamics that is it causes sodium retention and increased blood volume so what happens in the alpha blockade we have seen there is decreased blood pressure this causes reduced renal blood flow and resulting in reduced GFR that is glomerular filtration rate this reduced GFR stimulates the sodium retention and sodium and water resorption so we have seen that this there is only alpha blockade whereas the beta is not blocked the beta receptors are still active so why are the beta 1 receptors it causes reflex increase in the renin secretion this renin secretion accentuates this condition of sodium and water resorption thus there is increased blood volume next is alpha receptors are seen in the eyes by inhibiting the alpha receptors in the eye it inhibits the dilatation of the pupil more especially in the alpha 1 receptors this causes meiosis that is the constriction of the pupil next is the alpha receptors are found in the blood vessels of the nose that is the nasal cavity by inhibiting it it causes inhibition of the vasoconstriction it is acting at both alpha 1 and alpha 2 receptors this vasoconstriction inhibition causes the nasal stuffiness next is we have seen that alpha receptors are seen in the smooth muscles of various part of the body so by inhibiting the alpha receptors it inhibits the contraction of the smooth muscles so this inhibition of the contraction of the smooth muscles in the urinary bladder causes reduced tone in the trigon sphincter as well as the prostate this reduced tone results in the good flow of the urine and it is more useful in bph patients that is benign prostatic hypertrophy patients commonly known as prostate disease in men so the example of the drug used for this is the prazosin next is by inhibiting the smooth muscle contraction in the genital urinary system in males more especially in the vas deferens it inhibits the ejaculation in males resulting in impotence so what are the uses of this alpha blockers it can be used in hypertension even in pheochromocytoma and in bph that is benign prostatic hypertrophy that is the prostate disease in males next about the beta blockers what is the classification first of all there is a group non-selective one that is those blockade acting at both beta 1 and beta 2 levels they are again subdivided into those without intrinsic sympathomimetic activity examples are propranolol sotalol and timolol and those with intrinsic sympathomimetic activity examples pindolol and those with additional alpha blocking 
examples are labetalol and carvedilol. Next is the second group of drugs known as the cardioselective one. They are acting only at the beta 1 receptors. Examples are metoprolol, ethanolol, bisoprolol, esmolol and nebivalol. So why there is cardioselective? We have seen that in beta blockers causes blockade at both beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. So what happens there? Due to beta 1 blockage, there is inhibition of the increased heart rate, increased force of contractility and increased conduction. Along with that, beta 2 blockade causes inhibition of this vasodilatation. It worsens the MI that is myocardial infarction. So this beta 1 blockade along with the beta 2 blockade that is reduced heart rate, reduced force and reduced conduction along with inhibition of the vasodilatation damages the heart. So this vasodilatation inhibition causes worsening of the POVD that is peripheral occlusive vascular disease. It results in the cold hands and feet. This causes reduced muscle blood supply. So you feel more tired and exercise intolerance. So about the beta 2 blockade, it inhibits the bronchodilatation that worsens the COPD as well as the bronchial asthma. So hence we need more beta 1 selective drugs for cardio protection. Hence metoprolol or atenolol can be used as good substitutes replacing propranolol. So what are the uses of the beta blockers? Beta blockers its action in the heart causes inhibition of the beta 1 receptors it causes reduced heart rate, reduced force and reduced conduction. Hence, it can be used at cardiac arrhythmias in myocardial infarction to prevent ventricular fibrillation in MI. Only cardioselective drugs are used there and in some cases of angina pectoris. What happens in the blood vessels? Beta blockers inhibit the beta 2 receptors in the blood vessels causing vasodilatation inhibition. So due to this blockage of the vasodilatation, there is increased blood pressure but that is seen only in case of adrenaline action that is only in association with the adrenaline. Next is this beta blockers inhibits the beta 1 receptors in the renal system. It inhibits the secretion of the renin causing reduced blood pressure in hypertensive patients. Next is its blockage in the beta 2 receptors of the skeletal muscles. It inhibits the tremors, that is it removes the tremors in the patients. So from this we have to go back that beta 2 agonist causes tremors. Example is salbutamol. Next is its action in the eyes. By inhibiting the beta 2 receptors in the eyes causes reduced aqueous humor secretion. Hence, this beta 2 blocker can be used for the treatment of glaucoma. Alpha agonist has got the same use of reducing aqueous humor secretion and hence alpha agonist can also be used with the beta 2 blocker for the treatment of the glaucoma. Next is beta blocker acting at the lungs. It inhibits the beta 2 receptors causing increased bronchial resistance. It worsens the COPD as well as the bronchial asthma. This beta blocker blocks the beta 2 as well as the beta 3 activity causing inhibition of glycogenolysis and lipolysis. These are the actions of the beta blockers. So what are the uses of the beta blockers? It can be used in hypertension for the treatment of cardiac arrhythmias, for the treatment of myocardial infarction, for the treatment of glaucoma and in thyrotoxicosis that is thyroid storm. Propranolol is the drug of choice for the thyrotoxicosis. It inhibits the sympathetic symptoms in the patient and also it inhibits the peripheral conversion of the T4 to T3. These are the actions of the beta blockers. Next is regarding some alpha plus beta blockers. Some drugs has got both alpha as well as beta to blockade. Examples are labetalol and the carvedilol. In case of labetalol, it inhibits the alpha 1 receptor 
inhibits beta-1 receptors, whereas it is a weak agonist of the beta-2 receptors. Due to this alpha-1 blockade, it inhibits the vasoconstriction, resulting in decreased blood pressure. Due to the beta-1 blockade, it inhibits increasing heart rate, increasing the cardiac force, increasing the conduction velocity. So this helps in decreasing the cardiac workload. By this beta-2 agonist action, it causes vasodilatation. Again, it reduces the blood pressure. As a result, due to this reduced blood pressure and reducing the cardiac workload, it results in a cardioprotective activity. And hence, labetalol can be used for cardiac protection as an antihypertensive. Next is regarding the carvedilol. It is an alpha-1 blocker as well as a calcium channel blocker. Both of these acts in vasodilatation. This helps in reducing the blood pressure as well as the cardiac workload. Again, a cardioprotective action. Next is the treatment for glaucoma. We have to summarize the treatment for glaucoma. We have seen that both alpha agonist as well as beta to antagonist, that is beta blockers, helps in the treatment of the glaucoma by reducing the aqueous humor secretion. These examples of the alpha agonist used for the treatment of glaucoma are dipivifrin, apraclonidine, and brimonidine. Beta used are timolol, betaxolol. This is the nutshell of the alpha and the beta blockers. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.